when I think of corporate VTubers, I think of this. So naturally, I created the expectation in my mind that you would instantly become famous just by joining a company. However, that was short-lived when I discovered the first agency VTuber. This is Japan. The strongest, most productive economic the world has ever known. Even though Japan's economy was booming during the 80s, it eventually collapsed during the 90s. Starting a decade-long depression, young listeners no longer related to the carefree sounds of idol music and city pop anymore, since it was all temporary. And this is where the first agency VTuber comes into play. Let me introduce you to... Her company Hoyopro believed her to be the innovation and change the idol industry needed. The company's CEO thought that because of her virtual nature, she would be far less prone to burnout, scandals, and aging. The only thing human about her was her voice and her dance moves, meaning she was able to transcend human limitations, which was unheard of from an idol. So naturally, interest peaked when people saw her in numerous magazines and advertisements, re-sparking interest in idols, so she had the potential to bring the industry back to its golden age like it was in the 80s. That was the dream at least. Despite not being human, she experienced her own set of problems. The project actually costed millions of yen to complete and would have costed millions more to move and operate her. And even though opportunities for them to make a return did come up in offers for Kyoko to appear in movies and television, she still felt uncanny to many. Some saying that her movements and facial expressions felt off. This would ultimately be her downfall since motion capture hadn't advanced enough to be as sophisticated and inexpensive like the VR headsets and trackers we have today. Kyoko was simply born too early to really take advantage of these innovative ideas that would later be used by modern day VTubers. Despite very little return, there were attempts to continue her career, but the initial novelty and allure of Kyoko did wear off, which was apparent because of long breaks and low sales for her debut album. And so being unable to capture a long-term audience, she faded into obscurity. It wouldn't be until 2016 when Keys and I would once again spark global interest for virtual idols, or what we now know them as. Hi, Domo, virtual YouTuber Keys and I. I'm pretty sure we all know that during her prime, she was blowing up. And of course, Horipro saw this and thought, huh, maybe we should try that again, hey. But Kyoko wasn't going to make a return. So Horipro needed a more modern take on the now upcoming VTuber genre. Introducing. Ayano Date. She debuted in 2018, and she's actually the canonical daughter of Kyoko. And so, with $20,000 raised from a Kickstarter and designed by popular artist Fukuhaya, who did illustrate some of her life's official merch and alternative outfits, she had a very promising opportunity to make her own following, since competition was quite scarce at the time, and she definitely did make the most out of this opportunity. Journalists wrote articles about her, she made YouTube videos, actively live-streamed, has full-body Tracking, made a ton of TikToks and... Yeah, there's two of them. Despite doing everything she could to make it big, the original voice of Yano was actually retired since the channel was growing very slowly. With the new voice, Horipro did redebut the character in 2021, hoping to attract a wider audience, but the original's content got completely wiped from the channel, and the only legacy she has left is her TikTok, which they strangely kept. Even with a new voice, the end results are seemingly minimal. The channel is still growing slowly, 
slowly but likely not at the pace that Hoyo Pro would like. And it's a shame to see her still be this underground since both hers and Kyoko's lore is unlike any other I've seen. And I can't help but wonder what happened. Even with monetary backing, exposure, and support from a company that was founded decades before Hololive and Nichi Sanji, she is definitely a far cry from other agency VTubers most people think of today. But the current Ayano does still actively live stream while also posting shorts and musu videos, so perhaps one day she can get the breakthrough that her mother couldn't. Anyway, thank you for watching and I'll see you soon.